Whoa, is this the past? <laughs> hey, cat, were you saying something? I got this. Hey, big guy, catch. Anime! Whoa. That'll keep him busy for a while. Now you need to explain what happened. <laughs> so, what's diff- Oh, the Wii U was released two years later. And Donkey Kong's green. <laughs> Do you guys remember when Sonic was cool? <laughs> he is not anymore. After its success, number two was quickly put into production. However, uh, Yuji Naka was Yuji not having it with Sega Japan. I don't like the brand of people's private business. What I do know is he moved to America in order to handle the development of Sonic 2. But back in Japan, newsflash, they had a whole Sega CD, an attachment to the Genesis that they were trying to sell to market. It greatly improved the graphical and memory capabilities of the Genesis, and they were looking to make an impact, as they needed a Sonic game. And they did not have the creator of Sonic. So they got the next best thing, the character designer of Sonic, Naoto Oshima, to lead the project. An artist leading a game? That could turn out great! What? What? What do you want me to say? It's a game named after the distribution method it's on. Initially, this was supposed to be a port of Sonic 2, but after the lackluster sales of that game, they decided to create Sonic CD in their own vision. Oh, I wish my eyes were kaleidoscopes. So Sonic CD, for as long as I can remember, it was often praised as one of Sonic's best classic 2D outings. I mean, the Wikipedia page still says it. And I mean, I sort of understand. You gotta put yourself in the shoes of somebody at this time. We had Sonic 1 and Sonic 2, then. Check out some of the clips of this gameplay, it was a graphical overhaul! Something to the likes that no one's ever seen before! A completely orchestrated soundtrack! Series firsts like Amy and Metal Sonic! And full motion video animated by the guys that made Goku! It's looking pretty good for Sonic, except it's not! If there was ever a game that existed on the hot to crazy scale. <laughs> I initially got to play this game in Sonic Gems Collection, it's like my high school lunch table, a group of freaks! So as much as I love the color orange, we're gonna be playing the 2011 version on PC because, you know, eh? Eh. Script? Game! Editing! My ass is a gelatin blob! Jeez, even Sonic isn't doing too good. He's like, half off screen, bloodshot eyes, uh... So this is this a self-reflection? Ah, let's just leave him. Alright, let's kick it off. So after an amazing opening cutscene sort of describing something I understand, we enter Palm Tree Panic and pause! <laughs> Let's just have a refresher on what, you know, Sonic games are like. Sonic 1 to 3, they built off of the last entry, keeping what worked and removing what didn't. Sonic 1 introduced Sonic as a momentum-based character, and I mean, look at him, he's going down and up slopes, like, that's a, that's a cool guy. Number 2, oh, give him a spin dash so he can speed up at any time for free. And then Sonic 3, mix and match the platforming sections to match Sonic's abilities and boil down what the essence of a Sonic game can be. Ah, Sonic. Sonic CD does not feel like a Sonic game. Okay, I'm being a little bit unfair. It feels like a Sonic game for the first 10 seconds. This happens, and now we're here. What was the point of that? Why, why did you make me do that? Couldn't even see half of it. So I'm not like an expert or anything, but you know how a Sonic game plays out. You say, hey, oh, there's the direction I want to go. Here are some multiple paths I can hip hop over or go through the straight way. You know, it's easy. Loop-de-loops, it's fun. This just feels like stuff was put into places. It could have been like five units away from where they are and I would not have noticed. I see no significance to some of the placement of these things. And that's not to say it feels like a natural breathing world, like stuff just sprouted in these locations randomly. No, there's just springs. There's just spikes in weird locations that serve no purpose into the level design. You wanna have a fast Sonic game, this doesn't do it. You wanna have an exploration-based Sonic game, this does not do it. And they just cannot sit still. Nothing could just sit still. Everything needs to have wheels. Put spikes on wheels, put the springs on wheels, everything must move, and you can barely see half of it. This game brings things out of me. Also, logic. Platforms. What is, what is one? Oh yeah, of course. <laughs> hey, you know how getting crushed in every single game, usually not a good idea, you don't want to do that. Oh! oh. <laughs> I was supposed to get crushed. That's how you go Someone just had a field day with ramps 
half pipes, springs, and for most times it doesn't even feel like they serve any purpose other than maybe looking cool. Wait a minute, looking cool? That's all this game is, it just looks cool. That's like, oh, we gotta show off the Sega CD's capabilities to so make everything bright and colorful. Make the enemies. The backgrounds, the foregrounds. Ah! This game single-handedly added a screen when you turn on your Wii. Artistically, sure. You know, if I looked at these sprite sheets, I looked at the level backgrounds, it'd be pretty beautiful. But would you like to play a game in a Salvador Dali painting? I mean, game design is an art form in itself. In art, obviously, it's respectable. I can do a lot of the sprite work here. But the difference between game design and art is, art can go, I have no idea what the f*** ah! this is. $10,000, please. And that, my friends, is the key problem with Sonic CD. <laughs> yeah, no, it, everything is the problem. It, completely everything involved. This game is a mess, and there's a couple reasons for that. Number one, the game's story and setting are a fever dream. I have no idea what these levels are supposed to convey, like... Where am I? How does it relate to the other areas I'm from? How does it relate to the ecosystem of this planet? I feel like the only theme these levels have is a color. I'm blue, I'm blue, I'm blue. Die. Holy moly, give me an adjective to use. Like, is this the Wendy's version of this place or a Burger King? What kind of gas stations are here? All right, so Palm Tree Panic, it's pretty, it's nice, but you know, wow, never seen that before. Collision Chaos, <laughs> it isn't lying. Amy's here now and now she's not. Other than that, welcome to Pink World where control and direction are meaningless. Who decided this? It's just funny to me. What made them think this is what Sonic players want? Moving fast horizontally? No, fill the entire ground section up with springs. Tidal Tempest. Uh... Oh yeah, Tidal Tempest, yeah. Of course, of course. It's Labyrinth Zone, but better. I'd never thought I would say that. At least you can make art out of Labyrinth Zone. Quartz Quadrant, conveyor belts that don't let me have control. Wacky Workbench, a bouncy bottom bumper that does not let me have control. My voice only gets this high when I'm mad about Sonic. Stardust Speedway, okay, you know, this is actually the coolest one in the game. It's like they ratioed all of the fun parts of the game into this one level, but it's such a blur because you can just zoom right through this level if you're not going for 100% and it's, um, it happened, it was cool. It on your own. Yeah, a cool boss fight, that. Th why is this the only level with like everything correct? And Metallic Madness. I mostly remember it for making me feel small. <laughs> I've heard of worse final zones. At least all align to aggressive alliteration. Asshole. And that's not even the story. The main story is Little Planet appears over this body of water once a month, apparently, and Dr. Robotnik is trying to enslave it, make it his Death Star, use it for resources, and collect the time stone so he can travel back through time to conquer time. But also, he's using this, and Sonic has to stop him. Amy's there as well. What a tale as old as time. Travel is the gimmick of this game. Past and future time posts. Sonic, when he touches one of these, can travel back to the bad. When you get one of these bad boys, Sonic gets a little past or future close to his number of lives. Which means after you collect enough speed, you can go all the way. After you collect enough speed, you can. After you harness enough speed by weaving through these levels, you can go to the past or future. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> you can go to the past or future. Yeah, this would be cool if you could do it. You know, when you wanted to and not lose it. Cause you accidentally hit the future signpost that they purposely litter everywhere. You know, this would be really fun if you could do it when you wanted to do it, that'd be fun. <laughs> so they let you do this for free in some areas, but it feels like a cop out on their end. We made this mechanic, we made all these levels, but you know, because it doesn't work in the levels, let's just throw these areas in. Okay, so when you get to the past or the future, you'll notice the levels are actually a little different, representing how these places looked in the past or future. Cool, I didn't know what they were in the first place. The future areas are often grungy, distorted after Robotnik takes hold of the planet, where the past versions often have more of a nature theme. Now, these are supposed to be the past and future versions of these places, but that significantly means less when I already have no idea what these places are supposed to be. Who is living in collision chaos? How's the traffic? Okay, yeah, we can do this, but what's the purpose? Well, they changed the later level so you can access different areas, but mainly three, 100%. So, in order to get 100% and the good ending, we need to go to the past and destroy these time machines and the metal sonic... Oh wait, no you don't. Okay, forget that. So you just have to go to the past and destroy these generators. Oh, okay. 
Forget going to the past. All you have to do is um, go to the end of each level with 50 rings and beat these special stages and get the time stones. I'm not kidding. You can do it both ways, apparently. <sighs> uh, so all of these, they depend on the level design. So let's talk about that. Let's not even talk about 100%. Let's just say you're playing. Some of these levels, again, there's just no rhyme or reason to the direction you're supposed to go. And in some levels, like Quartz Quadrant or Tidal Tempest, there's just open areas you can hold right and get to the end of the levels. Like, really, I'm not exaggerating. They're just here and you can beat the level free, no charge. What's the point of exploring if I can just do this? I guess a counterpoint would be why play a game at all if you're not going to explore. I mean, I play a game about debt, so who am I to talk? So at first it's like, whoa, dude, like did you not just say you can't time travel easily? Like what, you can do it right here. But it's like they didn't think of the mechanic of this time travel thing when designing the levels. So then they threw in these big open areas and these bouncy ball spring middle areas, which is, it's stupid. It's dumb. I, welcome, did you, uh, maybe you haven't heard. I may not like this game, just a little. Anyways, there's some paths that open up that often lead to the time machines and if you keep an eye on the present version, you can find the location, go, circle back to it, and get it. Congratulations, you're on the way to getting 100%, but... Then what's the point of the future signpost at all? Once you hit the time machine, the level will say you got a good ending, you have the, the, the thing in order to clear the game. But there is no point in going to the future unless you want to see the good future versions of the level. But then it also brings up the point why I have a bad future of the level. But then it also brings up the point why I even have a present version of the level. Why I have a past version of the level if I don't even want to f***ing play the game? I will say that the good future versions of levels are actually really cool. It's one of the cooler parts of this game if you actually go and investigate it. And in every Act 3, they do show you a good version if you happen to do the first two acts perfectly, getting the time machines and clearing with no problems. Going back to saying how this game is flash over function, yeah, the game functions like a vacuum cleaner, but the flash. Oh, they made four different remixes of each of the zones just to differentiate past, present, good and bad futures. And there's a US and Japanese soundtrack. And I know for some reason there's a debate about this. I think both of them are fantastic. They have that 90s funk style, which is my favorite genre. So I'm always finding myself listening to it. So there, there's my compliment on the game. The music's fire, just the area that the music is in, it uh, sucks. But you may not have to do any of this if you just go after the time stones. Just like Sonic 1, you collect 50 rings, carry them all the way to the end of the level and you get a special ring. This takes you to the special stage, which I actually sort of like, even though it's kind of... But these stages are knock out all of these UFOs. They're kind of hard, but I just kind of warp out and save before I die, which you can do on the PC ports, and maybe I'd hate it more, but it's not my least favorite special stage ever. If you thought holding rings in a normal Sonic game was challenging, this is just unfair. Some sections will just launch you in a direction, get you hit by an enemy that you couldn't see coming because, you know, you don't know what the hell the level's doing at some points. Sometimes you just gotta... Let the level do its thing. Just let it have its fun, okay? And rinse and repeat, get to the end of the game, and congratulations, you won. Why does that sound sarcastic? There are two different endings, whether you get all of the time stones. There's one where Robotnik keeps the time stones, reverses time, and Little Planet is still there, or you manage to defeat him and free Little Pla- <laughs> Oh, what? <laughs> Wait! There were, like, animals on that! That was, like, a whole ass thing, I thought. Yup, I killed them, and I'll do it again. At least the cool anime shall save this game's reputation. Sonic City has good ideas, and that is as far of a compliment I think I can give it. I don't think I'm being unreasonable for the reasons I don't like this game, but if I told you any detail about this game, the time traveling, the style, the music, it would sound like the best Sonic game ever. Unfortunately, it is not even close. <laughs> Oh god, what's more important? Returning to my own timeline or ripping on Sonic CD for another minute or so? The boss fights in this game are an absolute joke! How is the final boss of the game the villain as a pinwheel? I couldn't believe the game was done after this. But nothing is worse than... <laughs> All right, I'm gonna go get a drink, actually. I got a banana. I got a banana, and I'm gonna eat it. Uh, I'm gonna eat it in the time it takes this guy to hit me. So I can take my time, you know? I love boss fights, first off. One of my favorite parts of games, really, you test your skills in a new setting that is not focused on platforming, but rather 
breathing and responding. It's, uh, semiotics, really. Semiotics is the idea of, um, signs and, uh, signs and signifiers. Signifiers being the thing you see in the signs being the overall message. The physical, for example, um, the signified here is Eggman in his thing. And, uh, for signifying, we have moments where his, uh, bulbous head is open, and we can't hit, and those little stars prevent us from getting close to him. So, the sign here is, uh, actually, this isn't a very good one at all. I, I actually can't tell what you're supposed to hit here. Not the spiky feet, not the boopy hands, but it's always him and his thing. Is it the bottom? I don't know. I couldn't tell you. There's nothing to it. He, and now that he has no defense, I can hit him this way, that way, I can go up, down, left, right, he can't do anything, so I can just, like, he will not hit me. Like, why does he look so shocked like this happened? Like, how could this have happened? <laughs> Cat, what could happen? Is our body going to try and return to its origin timeline by stretching and contorting across multiple millions different of timelines until we reassemble into something that is just a mere copy, a mere imitation of what we once were? <laughs> oh, well, you want to take a selfie to commemorate? <laughs>